Hmm, okay. Ooh. That's terrible. Oh, uh, hello, my little Christmas helpers. This is my Christmas parlor, and I'm here today to talk to you about the history of Christmas at the Disney parks. Not the history of Haunted Mansion Holiday, no, that's as far away from near and dear as you could get for me. For me, I've always loved sweaters, and as you can see from my favorite one here, I have quite the affinity for them, especially when they're Disney themed. And so today I thought we'd take a trip back in time and examine the history of sweaters in the Disney parks. Not just Disneyland, but Walt Disney World as well. So cuddle up with your friends and loved ones, grab yourself a nice hot steaming mug of whatever this is, and get ready for a brief history of all the sweaters at the Disney parks. All right, I'm gonna try another sip of this. I'm just kidding guys, it's empty. I, d I did it again, there's nothing in here. These are so gullible. You and yours are watching the Offhand Disney Holiday Special. A brief history of sweaters at the Disney parks. Featuring special guest stars, Kevin Perjura from Defunct Land. Disney Dan from his YouTube channel, Disney Dan, will pop in later to make a very special appearance. With a special guest appearance from our very own Matt from the Matterhorn Matt YouTube channel. And introducing Sam from the YouTube channel Expedition Theme Park. And a special presentation by Oaf Hand Disney himself, that's me. Um, <clears throat> Let's talk about sweaters. The original Christmas sweater we all know was worn by the man himself, Walt Disney. And judging by photographs, Walt had quite a thing for sweaters, wearing them throughout different television appearances and appearances within the parks. <laughs> but that's enough talk for the real life inspiration you can find in the movies and theme parks. Let's talk about Walt Disney's 1937 classic, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and which of these seven dwarfs wore sweaters. In the film, we see the dwarfs working in their mine, and mines are usually pretty cold because they are underground, so we can assume that some of the dwarfs may be wearing sweaters to keep themselves warm. Upon closer inspection, we can see that these little men are wearing things like jackets and vests, but none quite wearing a sweater until we reach Dopey, who seems to be wearing an oversized, very thick shirt. But is this technically considered a sweater? And for that, we need to go to the official character description on the Disney Wiki, which reads, in full, in the 1937 film, Dopey is a short and slender dwarf. Unlike his companions, he has no beard and is completely bald. He has pale skin, baby blue eyes, giant ears, thick black eyebrows, and a small pink cherry nose. He dons a loose olive drab turtleneck, now pause, right there. A turtleneck is indeed a type of sweater, and as seen here in the 2022 remake of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Dopey wears one in the film, making this the very first instance of a sweater in a Walt Disney Animation Studios major motion picture. But I'm Offhand Disney, and you guys don't come here for movie information. I know you guys come here for the theme parks. So what is the very first instance of a sweater within a Disney World or Disneyland attraction? And for that, we go back to the opening day of Disneyland, to a very crucial ride called Snow White and Her Adventures. And, oh, what's that sound? Oh, well, that's just the Christmas chime, meaning our very first special guest star is ready for their segment. So, this is really exciting, guys. I'm here to introduce Sam from Expedition Theme Park to read the entirety of the night before Christmas to us today for this video. Enjoy, Expedition Theme Park. Uh, no, I definitely don't have time to do that. Uh, okay, um, well, it seems we might be having some sort of technical difficulty or something. So let's go ahead and talk about sweaters at Disneyland. You would be hard pressed to find a sweater at opening day Disneyland. Aside from the aforementioned Snow White and her adventures, the closest you would probably get is a conductor or an engineer for the Disneyland Railroad, but these are more coveralls, not really sweaters. When the Haunted Mansion opened in 1969, come on guys, you thought I would go a whole video without talking about the Haunted Mansion? They got to wear coats, but again, not quite sweaters. And it should be noted that when the weather gets a little bit colder, cast members are 
are allowed to wear coats, but I don't see too many sweaters. But on the flip side, it's hard for me to convey just how much of a gold mine for sweaters the Carousel of Progress is and was. The ending scene, of course, takes place at Christmas time, so we see a lot of Christmas sweaters in this scene. Not just your everyday sweater to keep warm, no, this is something that you would get re-gifted from your grandma. But this raises a very excellent question. The Carousel of Progress reigns supreme as king of sweaters in the Disney parks. But where does that leave the future of sweaters in the Disney parks? Where do we go from here? And the answer to that question is, of course, to Walt Disney World. And oh, uh oh, would you listen to that? That's another Christmas chime, which means that it's time for our second guest star, everybody. Oh, this one's gonna be a doozy. Everyone coming to you live from Disney Dan's Disney Den, we go now to the Disney Den to show you the new completed first official, very excited about this, offhand Disney Christmas tree. So Dan, Take it away, buddy. Oh, hey, buddy. Um, the Christmas tree is not done yet. Uh, back to you. Fine, fine. That's okay. Uh, you know, it, we'll just give it a little more time. I, uh, I guess we'll talk about something else related to Disney sweaters. Now, geez, how much time do I have left? Oh, okay. Um, Figment had one this year. Figment did have a sweater this year and people, including me, I'm, I'm people, lost their collective minds over it. The new blue Christmas sweater is not to be confused with Figment's already existing yet equally as tasteful yellow sweater. Figment's new very festive sweater includes the Journey into Imagination pavilion logo and an outline of the architecture on the bottom. Now this is one of the very first instances of Disney putting a sweater on one of their flagship characters for a holiday overlay. Which begs the question, will they ever do it again? Maybe put a sweater on the Hatbox Ghost, maybe on Captain Jack Sparrow, or <gasps> one on the Yeti in Expedition Everest, make it a holiday overlay for Expedition Everest. That's one way to fix the Yeti, kind of. And oh, yep, there it is again, right on time, everybody. Here we go. Third time's the charm. The Christmas chime chimes another time, and this time the Christmas chime chimes in time for me to introduce you guys to our next guest, Matterhorn Matt. So now I'd like to hand it over to Matt for this next segment. And now, Matterhorn Matt for a full reading of the script for Ron Howard's Jim Carrey's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Yeah, I'm not reading that. Yeah, you know what? I, I actually had a feeling that would happen. But uh, real quick, before we do anything else, uh, just want to check on Kevin. Kevin, are you going to do your segment? No. Oh, okay, that's what I thought. Um, well, this was supposed to be a three hour long video, everybody, with dancing hippos and crazy fireworks spectaculars. I don't even think the hippos are ready. I think the real message here is that during the Christmas season, your friends may be busy, and that's okay. You might have to just sit in your office and record a video all on your lonesome about Disney sweaters, and that's okay. That's a gift of the season. So everybody, from my family to yours, happy holidays and Merry Christmas. Welcome to the end card for my holiday video. I had a lot of fun making it this year with all of my friends, Disney Dan, Matterhorn Matt, Defunct Land, and of course, Expedition Theme Park. In the video, it may have seemed like they didn't have time for me, but these people are super great and set aside some time to film some cameos for my channel. So thank you all so much for all of your help in making this video and thank you guys for watching it. The names you see scrolling past on the left hand side are those of my Patreon supporters over at Patreon.com. If you want early access to episode audio or sometimes even full videos, head over there and even just one dollar will grant you access to most of the perks. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter at OffhandDisney and maybe take a look at my subreddit. Again, all of those are going to be in the description, so I don't know why I'm bothering to tell you guys. You guys always read the description, right? Right? And now that my holiday special is done, I am ready to settle in for a long winter's nap. I'm taking the rest of 2020 off because this year has been quite a doozy. I'm sure you guys can agree with me on that. And I think I need a little bit of a break. So I'm going to do just that. So everybody, I will see you in the new year. And until then, thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.